does he want? This is one big champion, right here. Can you feel that? Can you feel what's about to happen on this field? I think we ain't done yet. Appreciate you letting me get the cushion. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Arlington on this Feel Good Friday. Look at these Cowboys fans. Thank you all, showing up and showing out. All right, Sunday night's primetime match will take place in Foxborough when Tom Brady and the defending champion Patriots take on Stephen A's new look Pittsburgh Steelers. Hall of Famer Terrell Owens still here with us. Stephen, I'll start with you on this one since it's your team. Do you feel like this will be a preview of the AFC Championship game? I think it has the potential to be. Um, I can't underestimate Kansas City being in the equation because of Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, uh, Tyreek Hill and the crew, no doubt about it. <clears throat> but I do think that people are sleeping on the Steelers. You talk about wanting volunteers, not hostages. That's what Mike Tomlin's line is. I think when you look at the kind of year that Big Ben Roethlisberger has had, I think when you look at James Conner and what his potential is, Juju Smith-Schuster's no joke. James Washington's been there already. Uh, Vance McDonald, uh, I like him a lot. Uh, Jesse James is gone. He no longer has to share those duties there. The offensive line is rock solid. And then when you look at their defense, if they're drafting Devin Bush, I think, is a, is a plus. If you're able to get to the quarterback, which I anticipate they plan on doing, I just think that the Steelers have the potential to win the NFC North, which I think will happen. You find yourself in a situation where one game, one playoff win could get you to the conference championship game. Do I think that's the potential for there? There's the potential for that? You're damn right I do. Um, <clears throat> there's a chance because you, when you have a coach-quarterback combination that's going to the Hall of Fame, you, you can never count them out. So Tomlin, Roethlisberger, you can't count them out. And obviously Belichick and Brady are always there because the AFC East is every year the worst division in football. Yeah. They always have a great record. All they ever have to do is win a single play. They have a bye in the first round. They win a single playoff game at home there in the AFC Championship mm -hmm. game. So the Pats, highly likely they'll be there. The Steelers have a shot, but I think the Chiefs are better. I think on paper the Chargers are better. I think the Jags can be sneaky good. I think the Browns are better, better in their own division. I'm not convinced the Steelers are better than the Ravens. So you can't count them out with Tom and Roethlisberger. Even last year, they didn't make the playoffs. They were 9-6-1. and one. They were one tie away from, you know, like a, a point away from being 10-6. and six. So you can't count them out, but I don't think the odds are very good for the Steelers. What do you Go think? I, I, I like the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. I like the way that what they did last year. I mean, they were, they were just a, some inches from being in the Super Bowl I last year. I think if Tyreek Hill hadn't gotten suspended, they go to the Super Bowl. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, again, like, I, I agree with Max. The, the Cleveland Browns, they look good on paper. On paper. On paper. If they can put those things together, then and we'll see how the season unfolds. Um, but you always got to count the, the, the Patriots in there. I, I agree with the fact that the, you, they always have a bye. They're one <laughs> they gotta win one. They got to win one game, and it's usually at home. Mm -hmm. And... and and on, by the way, place and, to play. and then, like, if you if you look at Tom Brady the wrong way, or there's some pre-snap <laughs> penalty, they'll take back an interception. By the way, let's not forget the Texans. And if everyone loved the Colts with Andrew Luck, if Brissett can hold it right. down, right. then the Colts are live, too. Well, let me be very clear. I'm forgetting about the Texans. I have no problem saying I forget about the Texans. Right. Lamar Miller going down, right. it just being about Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins, even though I love both of them. The bottom line is it's not enough. They lose. The clowny yep. gone. I'm not sold. I'm not sold in them. I think Jacksonville wins that division because mm -hmm. their defense is going to be stout. And I think Nick Foles ain't going to make the mistakes that Blake Bortles made. And obviously with Andrew Luck going in Indianapolis, even though I shouldn't underestimate Tennessee that much, I'm going to pay attention to what they do, particularly in the over there. Yeah. There's a little parody over there, but I'm going to go with Jackson. Nick Foles' influence on the Jags. Be Absolutely. careful. That, no, that's same thing. It could be a different deal. Tara, let me ask you this about the game. So in Fox or Burrow, Steelers come to town. No Le'Veon, no A.B. Are they going to do that, anything a, this that's, year? That's a problem. I mean, we're going to see what Juju can do this year without okay. A.B. He was definitely a benefactor of A.B.'s production mm -hmm. last year. So normally when you have a number two guy yeah. and he puts up n number one numbers, then that number one leaves, as obviously you're talking about Antonio Brown, let's see what Juju can do put in that number one spot. But because there's a lot of times. responsibilities that goes with being a number one receiver. Now he has he doesn't have somebody to take off to take the heat off him, and now he's a benefactor. He's but he still has the same quarterback. No, I, I get that, but it's I, take, I always I always remind people 
Back in the day when the Buffalo Bills had Eric Mose and Peerless Price, Peerless Price put up big numbers. He wanted to be a number one receiver. Peerless Price got that big contract, went over to the Atlanta Falcons to be that number one guy. We haven't heard from Peerless Price but, since. But a lot of times that's because the number two guy is really a slot guy who puts up numbers. But Juju Smith-Schuster has the appearance of a number one receiver. The numbers he? say that. But now his production now without A.B. has to prove that as well. On that note, perfect segue for me. Speaking of A.B., uh, this according to our Josina Anderson. We talked about the problems between him and GM Mike Mayock. Apparently, A.B. used disparaging language, was insulting his GM, even using the word cracker. Right. Gentlemen, I'll give you the floor on this. Well, listen, the bottom line is this. You know, Max can speak to you know, what that word means to men in the white community and all of that stuff. What I can tell you is that I know what A.B.'s intent was when he said it. <laughs> he meant it for it to be incendiary insulting. and disparaging right. and insulting and what have you. And we were under the impression that somehow, some way, Mike Mayock had a conversation with him, et cetera, et cetera. No, he was practicing, and he walked over to Mike Mayock while Mayock was, practice, was watching practice and confronted the GM in front of teammates. And so when you do something that egregiously insubordinate, there has to be an action that's taken against yeah. you. And if, again, the guy that I'm watching is John Gruden, because what are you going to do? You're the $100 million man. It's clearly your franchise. Everybody knows it. An additional 18 to 20 million, according to what I was told, in terms of incentives in this contract. You brought Mike Mayock was minding this business covering the NFL for the NFL Network. That's what he was doing. You brought him over as the GM. You, you elected him to be that guy that you empowered. If you don't handle this and you don't support him in, this, in, in his willingness to suspend Antonio Brown, you basically stripped Mike Mayock of any kind of potency whatsoever. I would say and this. That's I, I would say this. The word cracker is not as offensive to white people, in my experience, as other words are to other ethnic groups because they, the, the white population has not been oppressed in the same way, etc. Um, however, you're right, Stephen, it's the intention. It's what you're going at. You hope to point out a difference culturally, racially, whatever, and use it to disparage. That's an issue. Remember when I said Antonio Brown is holding my beering himself? Like, you see something bad, hold my beer, I'll top that, right? He's doing it to himself. Right. I, we were just here earlier in this segment, and, it, and, and even though it came from the same incident, it's coming out faster, and here's what's crazy to me. This is my suspicion. Something worse will happen. Like, if they try to patch this up and he sits out a game or two and then comes back, something he'll do something even worse and it'll come in even faster. Like, he is self-destructing in front of our eyes. I think there is something wrong. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. And uh, that, it's, it's, it's clearly a lack of respect uh, with the GM. Like I said, obviously the relationship with he and Gruden is a bit better than he and the GM. So this is something that obviously has to be rectified. Um, for me, it, it's, it hurts to hear some of the things that were being said. This is not AB-like. I know, I, I, I like AB. Yeah. This is, I, I'm, I'm almost about in agreement. There may be something wrong. Um, but obviously this has to be rectified. There has to be some consequences well, what, to his actions. Well, what do you, in light of what you, the particulars that you just heard, what do you think should happen to him now? Do you think he should be suspended, or do you think he should just be issued an apology? He should just issue an apology no, I think and be obviously, done with it. Obviously, there needs to be something done. To what degree, I have no idea. Uh, obviously, there's a lot riding on this season. That's why they acquired yeah. A.B. Again, every, every, every scenario is different. Teams have handled players differently. Organizations have ha handled situations yeah, differently. Guys, and you know, coaches I would, I would embrace one, one, one quick, Stephen A. He, he's saying that there's, there's a lot's riding on the season. I got to admit to you, I don't believe that. I'm looking at, I, listen, I don't expect you to be better than Kansas City or the Chargers. But, but because I of what Gruden did, what you talked about earlier, got rid of Cooper, got rid of Mack, he's got to stick with this guy. But what I find interesting, I don't want to act like A.B.'s the devil. It's, it's, it, there's, three, there's three sides to every story. Right. But what you said, and we talk about the word cracker, and we're, I don't know if he's necessarily spiraling. Maybe it's just more about this, like the mission for respect. And he feels disrespected over and over and he over. He doesn't get to make that argument after getting $30 million and forcing his way out. Absolutely, because that's, get to what do that. you, that's what you worked so hard for. I understand being a third rounder, you have that chip on your shoulder. Obviously, he was later round than I was. So he worked his butt off 
to get to the point because he was voiceless. Until you get paid and you, until you have power and respect or some type of entitlement. Right, but T.O., maybe that was the best thing that he was voiceless because what he's saying, what his voice is not resonating or it's resonating in the wrong way. Look, and, and look this is that. where he is, T.O. This is where he is right now in my view. His agent's being asked about his sanity, about his mental health. I mean, think about that. And you know where I am with it? The best course for T.O. now is to embrace that and to, like, make, like, it's the insanity a -B, defense. A.B., you mean A.B. A.B., yeah. yeah. so what did I say? Yeah. Well, T.O., T.O., well, I'm looking at T.O. Yeah. Hey, okay. I just said Boogie but Cousins no, in right, the right, right. But the point okay. is, no, no, there's, we should, I, I apologize, right. but there should be a line drawn right. between, oh, this receiver had controversy, but you, like, this is completely Dude, different. It my point is this. throw my name up with, with situations like that because I never did anything. That's right, and all you did is ball in the Super Bowl on one leg. But, but this is my point. A.B. at this point is best served by entering the insanity to plea. Like, he, he needs to embrace that. Like, people are like, is he, has he gone crazy? The best thing to be said, yes, know. I need some help. You guys because said, otherwise he could lose his money. You said, yeah. Stephen A., he got paid. He doesn't have the right to do it. But maybe he feels like, I got paid, so now I can do it because well, he's comfortable. But that's the problem. And here's the other problem. Right. Listen, I talk to people in the league. I talk to people in the yeah. Players Association, all this stuff. There's a negotiation that's ongoing. And you have to understand how these owners think. They're looking for every excuse under the sun to, to justify not, not paying, paying dudes. Right. So right. when you act like this, if you, I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not yeah. saying they'll get away with it. Right. But if you are A, B, clearly you are thinking about no one but yourself right. with yeah. every action that you take. And that is what is unconscionable and indefensible. He's not about even thinking about himself. Think about this for a second. He's got his money, right? They haven't got an ounce of production from him. If you told me right now you could have A.B. on your team before all this went down this year, 30 million, you want A.B.? Who's saying no to that? All of a sudden, they're like, based on okay. this behavior, we don't want I him. Don't know. I'm just glad he got rid of the mustache. Yeah. All right, we're talking about diva receivers. How about OBJ went to the Browns? Will they live up to the hype? We'll ask Terrell about that right after the break. More first take. And we'll preview Cleveland's opener. All the action from week one, game by game. And make sure you tune in for full reaction to the good, the bad, and the ugly of week one in the NFL. That's Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on First Take. More from Dallas in a moment. The NFL season is right around the corner. Football is finally back on Sundays.